to what is in fact despicable crime. It's not art, it's theft. And it takes a particularly heartless and greedy person to do it. This is the so lady I was talking about that ripped off millions of dollars. She took $25 million from her own family and friends who lost everything. She's now presumed dead, so we'll never know why she acted so shamefully. Melissa Caddick, though, is starting to look like a cheap pretender compared to Chris Marco. Over 20 years, he's taken a quarter of a billion dollars from investors. And now most of their money is missing. But Marco is very much alive. And that means we can ask him, where did it go? All right, now let's look up Chris. Now this is Melissa Caddick. I said about her foot being found on a beach way down south of Sydney. And I don't know if you believe me or not, but here it is. Have a listen. Talk about baffling. Does the macabre discovery of fraudster Melissa Caddick's foot on a beach mean she took her own life? Or was she murdered? Even stranger, with no other body parts found, is there a chance she's still alive? The case of the 49-year-old who pretended to be a financial whiz to fleece $25 million from her family and friends continues to intrigue. And tonight we can reveal another extraordinary twist, one that could actually bring smiles to those whose life savings she stole. Liquidators following the money trail have uncovered a hidden and significant stash of cash. Let's see where this is. Well, that's yellow the sand. Of Melissa Caddick and the missing millions had confounded detectives. That was until the sea offered up a gruesome clue. A shoe was located on the shoreline of the Bordana National Park. Within that shoe were the remains of a human foot. DNA from the foot was last night matched to a DNA sample from Melissa Caddick's toothbrush and from family members. The discovery of Melissa's foot nearly 400 kilometres from where she was last seen was a plot twist that no one saw coming. It's a mystery, and the mystery every time that you think you're going to get an answer. He's, the, the he's a former policeman over the uh, Wirral. Tonight, William Tyrrell disappearance, he got, he got the boot. Because of corruption. Where did the money go? As for the first time, financial investigators take us inside their search for the truth and reveal a major breakthrough. They've located a hidden fortune. The multi million dollar question where is all the money now? There's uh, a shared portfolio which is uh, quite significant. We're confident that there will be um, quite a healthy return to investors. And after months of silence, now Melissa's family speak about this sorry saga. It's a hard time for your family. It's a hard time for everybody. And it'll take a very, very long time for everybody to get over it and everybody to get back to normal. They just never know. This spot right now is uh, ground zero. Because Until last week, few people had heard of Bonda Beach. A three kilometre stretch of sand... Now, this New policeman with a bald head, former policeman, this guy, he recorded a suspect without his knowledge illegally and he got the boot out of the police force. That's captivated so much of Australia. So it's now he's a private investigator for Channel 9. As police sniffer dogs scoured the sand here for more clues on the woman who's quickly become one of the country's most infamous fraudsters, 60 Minutes Special Investigator Gary Jubelin was also on scene. He, he's a former cop. He got done for being yeah, doing the wrong thing. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, but certainly from the investigator's point of view, it is a significant breakthrough because you can actually lock in. That's a fact that you can lock in that uh, at this point in time, all this is deceased and the body part has washed up here. The question now is if this is suicide or something more sinister. Either way, Gary believes a person close to Melissa knows more than they're letting on. That's a former I house, think with more the clues. nature of the crime that Melissa has um, allegedly committed, it would be very difficult for someone else not to be aware of those activities. 
or perhaps be an accomplice to be actively involved in, right. the, involved in that. Now, I'm only looking at this to see how far her body travelled. So let's put a pause on it, and I'll go back and I'll look up the name of the beach, and we'll see how far she travelled, just a foot in a shoe, just out of that thing about, I was saying there about with Theo. How far would he travel? Let's have a look. That's where she was found. Beach called Marimbula, New South Wales. This spot right now is uh, ground zero. Until last week, few people had heard of Bonda Beach, a three kilometres stretch of sand on New South Wales' south coast near the holiday haven of Marimbula. But the quiet hideaway has now become the latest location in a crime drama that's captivated so much of Australia. It will be led to the coroner to establish what happened. As police sniff dogs scour the sand here for more clues on the woman who's quickly become one of the country's most... Look how yellow and clean the sand is. No it's garbage, no bottles, no rubbish. Was also on Just scene. bits of wood. You can see the ocean fall. It opens up so many options again. It's a double-edged sword, but certainly from the investigator's point of view, it is a significant breakthrough because you can actually lock it. All right, let's have a look. So that's back in May 7, 2021. So we don't know where Marimbula is. Let's pan out a bit. There's Marimbula. There's Eden, and then down here is the Victorian border. There's the Can River. So where's the Victorian border? I think that's the Victorian border comes out there somewhere just near there. So there's Eden. Tathra. Bermagui, right? That's called Bermagui, Central Tilba, Naruma, Dalmany, Tourist Head, Marubula, Mogo, Batemans Bay, uh, Borley Point, Milton. Still haven't got to Wollongong yet. St. Vincent. Now, there's Nowra, which is the end of the railway line over there which is a uh, bomber dairy. That's where the train line finishes. Check that down a bit. Right. There's a clam, a blowhole. That's where I went. I've done a video down there, a clam, a blowhole. I see me old mate down here. The, uh, you see the one I do on the uh, Flying Scotsman train. That's where he lives. He lives way down there. There's Wollongong. There's Sydney, that's Botany Bay down here. Port Jackson, which is Sydney Harbour. And this is where apparently she went in. She went in up here at Four Clues. There's some idiot out the front. Now Watson's Bay is up the top. And... Watson's Bay, and she's gone in about here somewhere. So that's where she's gone thrown in up there. She didn't get thrown in up the top up here because that's a Navy base. Four clues is here. Um, oh, that's in Sydney Harbour. Just trying to give you an idea. Right? See all this grassy green area? That's a golf course as well. There we go. There's a lighthouse reserve for Boar Clues. So that's where she's gone in. She's gone in there and she's gone all the way down the coast. So, you can't say a body doesn't travel. No, that's just another entrance. So, if Theo disappeared up here, 
at Byron Bay. I mean, his body could wash up down in down in near Newcastle. That's about four hundred miles. Because that's look at the coastline. You just don't know. And that took nine months for her, I think it was, to show up. When she finally showed up, see, Southwest Rocks, still not even up there. Nambucca Heads, Crofts Harbour. And they said the bit I said about Crofts Harbour was a woman said she's seen a guy on the side of the old Pacific Highway north of Crofts Harbour. So there's Crofts Harbour there. All right, that's the township of Crofts Harbour. See? Park Beach Plaza, Palm Beach Plaza, that's Coffs Harbour. And then the old Pacific Highway comes out here. And she reckons that he was standing on the side of the road, lying down on the side of the road, but this other guy was hitchhiking. And that's the motorway. That's Pacific Highway. And look at the, look at the um, deserted areas again. That's called Wilgulga. Again, there's another dangerous lighthouse. See, the same thing. Comes around, swirls around, comes around. Doesn't really show it. And what happened then? Just, whoop. See, we've got all these little island things out there in the ocean along the coast. See, that's out there from Bundaberg, right? Sorry. Phone's jumped on me. So, so there's Coffs Harbour. It's where the woman on the car said she said Theo. And this is Byron Bay up here, that little tiny dot. Right? So you can see the point what I'm trying to see. So there's the swirl, and then the current runs down here. There's another swirl. See? And that's what the Australian coastline's like. But when you look at the north side of Byron Bay, as I said before in the live stream, you can actually see the sand on the bottom of the ocean. Look, you can actually see the old fish wreck, the old boat wreck, right? When, but when you go on the other side of Byron Bay, it is so deep, you can't see nothing. Can't see anything. Oh, nothing. This is so deep. And yet here, because there's a sandbar, so there's the sandbar there, see? It? That comes out there from the beach. That's why people always swim up there at Byron Bay, up there at Toyagra Beach. There is the old nudist beach I was trying to talk about. Had two cars in it. See, one, two cars. Picnic tables are there. That's the toilet block over here. That's where I broke down that day and had me bum parked in there and my nose pointing down here and come out it's all full up full of full of cars. But anyway, anyway, that's just a little one there for me. That just gave me an idea, four hundred kilometers down the Australian coast. So they'll sort her out too. A lot of mysteries in the world, isn't there? Murders everywhere. I mean, but that's only three, that's only two people, three people. The girl, Byron Bay, Theo, um, the woman who sold me $25 million. Uh, this policeman done, former policeman done William Tyrrell, the missing boy out of um, a town up there near Port Macquarie, Kendall. They're up there this weekend, up there searching with hundreds of policemen going through the bush digging up all the grass and the tree roots and everything else. And now they seize the now deceased um, foster grandmother's car from the new owner down here in Sydney. And they're doing DNA forensic tests on that. So the adopted grandmother who lost the child, lost William, she's died. And now they seized her car down here in Gaimere, down in the southern shore of Sydney after she died and they're saying if they can find any forensics. So why didn't he think of that when he was on the case before he got the sack? No, he was off chasing all the 
alleged sex offenders and trying to do illegal recordings on them. And that's how he got busted, because the guy went in and made a complaint that he recorded his voice in, in this guy's own, on a telephone conversation without telling him. And that's against the law. So therefore, then he went to court and he got the sack. So now he's working for Channel 9 as, a, as an investigator. But he's still a cop. He's still got the ingenuity. He's still got all the stuff. He just broke one rule. You don't do illegal phone tapping. And he got done. It's like everybody else. You'll be the perfect driver, but we always end up getting a speeding ticket somewhere. And then you feel so stupid. Well, he'd done a very stupid thing, but he's still a good cop in what he does. Anyway, so let's see if we can work out what happened to um, Theo. I hope this just has a bit of light how far like, that woman's foot went. See, that's just an example. How far could Theo bodies go if he did fall in the water? Her shoe went 400 kilometres with a foot in it. So how far would Theo go? We don't know. As I said, it's all a big mystery. Mr. Hominoid, good luck. God bless. Like, share and subscribe. If you find that bit of news update interesting, there's another example of people in the water. That's what I mean. You just don't know how far you're going to travel. It's Mother Nature. Look at floods and tornadoes. You look out the door there one day, it's sunny. The next day you come back and your house is gone due to a tornado. Mother Nature. See ya.